So hi everybody. Uh, so today, like, we're going to actually talk about the uh, structures and then also the functions of your respiratory systems. Uh, so before we even actually go detail, actually, I, I pre-done uh, this diagram so that way we don't waste our time. But uh, before we start, you know, respiratory systems, uh, uh, I, I want to actually let's let's define uh, what are we going to talk about and uh, why uh, what is what is respiratory systems meant. And that's uh, what we're going to focus on, right? So basically, uh, whenever we talk about the respiratory system, there are one more thing that uh, that I want to make it very clear to you is let's define what is mean by uh, ventilation versus what is respiration. That's what I wanted to talk firstly, okay? Uh, because these are two different things. So uh, before even we go to that, let's just define what mean by ventilations, or is this a mean the same thing, or respirations, all right? This is the first thing that. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about uh, the structure of functions as we go. But let's define first what this is. So basically, whenever we talk about the uh, uh, ventilations, ventilation is same as your breathing. Uh, which, so we can define as the the amount of air that is your exhaling and inhaling. That is called ventilation. That's called breathing. Okay. So basically, the, you whatever you're taking in, you're throwing out. Okay. So that is ventilations but the respiration is two different things and what kind of resp and respiration itself is actually divided into two different types of respirations one is called direct respirations and other one is called indirect respirations what does this mean so direct respiration basically means is that uh, direct respiration basically means is that the whenever the whenever gas exchange happens okay oxygen is directly uh, whenever oxygen gets to the uh, tissue, oxygen directly uh, is in contact with the tissue. That's what direct respiration basically means. Indirect means that in order for the oxygen to the, get to this tissue, it has to be carried by something else. Okay, for instance, it has to carry in our, in our human body, it has to carry it via blood. Okay, and, and also it has like a, in order to get oxygen to get to your tissue, what happens? It has to pass through the, your surface area, number one thing right and other one is that it has to be carried by the blood right and then then after that what happens is that through the blood what happens is that uh, or from the uh, from your blood uh, the, the oxygen get desaturated and then it goes to your tissue okay this is the indirect way of providing uh, your oxygen to the tissues right and this is usually present in us like human uh, a human being and direct is like it does not require uh, blood or it doesn't have surface area it just directly oxygen can get get to the tissue di uh, directly and where is it present uh, usually present in like sponges uh in in like animals all right uh, or even ringworms that's why you can see the direct respirations and uh so now like this indirect respiration itself is divided into two different parts uh, one in human in us there is called you have external respiration okay external respiration and then other one is called you have a internal or you can simply call cellular or you have a tissue respirations it means the same thing all right just giving you different names internal cellular respiration what is the external respiration basically means is that if i want to uh if i want to make a like let's just this, make this conduction zone and let's make this alveoli right and what happens is the blood is coming here right and this is your capillary so basically what happens is that you exchange like look ex there's oxygen here and the carbon dioxide here right so basically the exchange of the respiratory gases between the air okay inhaled air and the blood this process through the the respiratory surface this this is called your external respirations so amount of inhaled air okay inhaled air and also the this uh respiratory gas exchange between the inhaled air with the blood that is called your external respirations and what happens is now this oxygen that comes in it will carried by your your blood right it first like the oxygen will dissolve into your uh, plasma then also it will bind to the hemoglobin right and it will carry your blood and it will go to the go to your left heart and then it'll get pumped out and later from the your capillaries from your systemic capillary it'll go to the, let's make this as a tissue right it'll go to the tissue and then when the oxygen go to the tissue what happens oxygen it goes to by process called diffusion process right it's a passive diffusion the oxygen get to the tissue right and what tissue does is that tissue uses oxygen right to break down like 
uh, nutrients like all those all those nutrients okay using the enzymatic process right and when they use enzymatic process utilizing the oxygen what do they make they make carbon dioxide plus water and they mix like a lot of energy like a lot of atp that's what they make then after that what happens this carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the cells okay to the venous blood and then it will carry back down here Okay, sorry, let's just make this carry here. Let's just make it will carry back and it will come back here. So basically, this whole process is from the cellular, this process, cellular breakdown. All this process is called your cellular respirations or your internal respirations. Uh, uh, this is called internal respiration, right? So whenever we talk about the respiration, we have to think about the respiration is the the exchange of gases between the respiratory surfaces that's going to get carried the carried to the blood and then whatever and then cellular cell is going to use this oxygen to make atp and then after that with the breakdowns of products carbon dioxide that will get that will get that will get dissolved in blood and with the with the blood it will come back to your uh, pulmonary systems and then they'll exhale out this whole process is called respirations okay so that's something that i want to make it very clear to you guys now now after that we'll talk about now what we do is like we'll talk about the what is the respiratory systems okay so you say whenever we talk about the respiratory systems okay respiratory system includes from your knee from your you from your nose like nasal side right from your nose like basic like i do here from like nose here like it requires from your goes from nose okay let's just write down here it goes from your nose okay and then after that what else is required right? because you're taking the you because the nose is for what it takes air like it takes air inside right so nose you can take it then after that uh, what is it's going to go to what the common passes for uh, your both food and air would be your pharynx right and then after that it's going to go to larynx okay and then it will go to your trachea and then this is the i'm just drawing it down this whole process is called respiratory process okay and then from trachea it's going to go to your your bronchi right from the bronchi, it will go to your terminal bronchioles. From the terminal bronchioles, it will go to the respiratory bronchioles. Then it will later in into alveoli. This whole process, okay. Whenever we talk about respiratory system, we have to talk about all those things, okay. So that's what we're going to discuss today uh, in this in this topic, okay. Now, first thing we have to talk about is the nasal area, okay. That's the first thing we have to talk about. And let's just let me just write. Let me just not erase that. And let's start from the nasal area. So if you look at this nasal area right here, look. You have a nasal area. So, if you look at the the your knees, these are their nasal no, nose are like divided into you have external nose and internal nose. You know you probably have learned the anatomy, right? So, what happens with the nasal area is that uh, this your knees, nasal area. What happens is that it play, plays a role. But before even we call, we talk about this, let's just define uh, actually what's the functions of your respiratory systems. Okay, that's what let's define. So one of the things is that. Uh, one of the functions uh, of your this zone is actually before even let's let's not talk about function. Let's just divide structure first. Okay, so basically, let me draw right down here from your your nose area. Okay, from your all the way nose area to nose, your pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and all the way trom all the way terminal bronchioles up to this. This uh, they're functionally they're divided as conducting zone. Okay. They're functionally divided by conducting zone, okay? Now, and from the respiratory bronchial, okay, let's just write it down in a properly, actually. Let's, because we have to talk about it in detail. Okay, look, let's all the way down. From your nasal area, right? From your nasal area, okay, let's just know nasal area. And then after that, you're going to have, what? Uh, you're going to have a pharynx, right? And then it's going to go to your, let's make it your larynx, okay? And then you go to your trachea. And then you have a, the primary bronchi, this is us. And then you have a secondary bronchi, okay? And then you have a tertiary bronchi. And then you'll have a what? Bronchioles, you can say large bronchioles. And then you'll have a terminal bronchioles, okay? All the way to this whole portions we define as that functionally we say this is a conducting zone, okay? And then, Oh, you have a functionally there's another part which is called you have a respiratory respiratory bronchioles all right and then you have a 
when you have a alveolar, it divides into like two, like two to six like alveolar ducts. Then it will become your alveolar alveolar sac or terminal sacs, and then it will become your alveolar. This portion is called your respiratory zone. All right, and we'll talk about this. So these are functionally divided, and we have to functionally actually uh, talk about what is the what is the function of the conductive joints, and also we'll talk about what is the function of the respiratory joints, right? But these are functionally divided. But they, you have to also talk about structurally; they're divided into two parts. Also, structurally, they say that you have a okay. Let's just write down it. You have an upper respiratory system, okay? Upper respiratory, okay? And then you have a lower respiratory, you know? So, like, you know, you probably have heard like upper respiratory infections, right? Or lower respiratory infections. So that's why, uh, so what are, this, uh, what are those uh, uh, organs that is actually, uh, uh, whenever we talk about upper respiratory inf uh, infection, what, what are they meant by? Which, whenever we talk about upper respiratory infections, we talk about nose, or we, we talk about pharynx, and all the structure around that, okay? Usually these, uh, these areas and Structures around structures around pharynx. Okay, so usually these refer as like anything. There's anything uh, you have problems within the structures or, or sort of like any sort of clinical manifestations. Then we say that there's upper respiratory infections or upper respiratory problems. Okay, and the lower respiratory we'll just say right here a lower respiratory and this is structurally okay. Lower respiratory. Whenever we talk, we talk about larynx. From the larynx, and then all the way down to from all the way from the larynx to all the way down larynx, trachea, bronchi, and all the way down to alveoli. We'll say all the way down to lungs, right? We said that is a lower respiratory uh, system. That's how we structurally define those. Are uh, there structurally? Okay. Now, what is the functions of conducting zone? That's what we have to come back. The conducting zone function of the conducting zone is that what it does it does conditioning. What is conditioning means? Conditioning basically means is that Hold this conducting conduct uh, hold this hold this knee all this area of terminal bronchus they do conduction and basically means that whenever we take the air you know okay it has a lot of dust right uh, it could it could have pathogens so what it does is that it hum humidifies number one things right and what it it also filters out your filters and sort of like pathogens so it it warms those air too because remember the temperature has to be in a your body temperature so that way you can have a good exchange. So humidifying, filtering out, warming out, uh, playing a role as a first defense mechanism. So that's what it does, right? So any sort of like pathogen comes in, like, you know, uh, it doesn't allow it to it, it to go in, right? So that's what it does. So one of the uh, warms, filtering, humidifies, and co conditioning, that is that is the functions of the conducting zones. And remember one more thing, in the conducting zones, it does not participate in a gas exchange. Okay, does not participate in a gas exchange. You have to remember that, okay? And then, so what is the functions of the respiratory zone is that, okay, one of the functions of the respiratory zone is that we, we can say that this respiratory zone is the one that actually participates on your gas exchange, okay? And they do have like macrophages, I will talk about that too, right? But uh, they they do uh, play some part of them uh, play a role into producing like some mucus too, but but more, one of the main functions of the your respiratory zones is to participate in your gas section. That's one of the main functions of that. Okay. Now, after we talk about it, let's go back and start from your nasal area. How does this uh, this help? How does this uh, filters out? Uh, we have to talk about all this all this thing. Okay. Now. Now, now, so if we go come back to this uh, nasal area right here, see, I'm there nasal area, right? So you have a nasal, you have external and internal, internals, and then nasal are divided by this, uh, this, this septum, okay? These are nasal septums, okay? And there's like different types of cartilage too. There's alar cartilage and all that. All that you should learn that in anatomy, right? But remember, one more thing that I want to focus in that is that your nasal, okay? Nasal are two cavity. You have one and two. These are called your nasal chambers, okay? Nasal cavity, right and left nasal chambers. And what is the what I'm focusing on here is that these nasals, the internal nose, okay? Because you take the air from the external external nostril, right? These are nostrils. So what happens is that there are different types of uh, this nasal cavities, internal nose. They're, they're separated in three different parts, okay? So they're separated in three different parts. Let's just let me divide this in three different parts. Let's make this as this lower part of your nasal nasal area. 
these are called the vestibular regions or vestibular area, right? So let me write down as a here vestibular area. So let me write it down right here. Okay, the lower part is called vestibular, vestibular reason. Okay, and the reason why is because in the vestibular reasons, they have this important type, so they have this hair cells. Okay, and hair cells are very important because this hair dress, what it does is that it's like entraps like any sort of like a bacteria, bacteria, it filters, it doesn't allow it to go in. And anything that's like greater than size of like 12 like micrometers, what happens is that it doesn't allow to go in because of these hair cells, okay? That's a, that's a very, very important thing for the uh, uh, thing you have to know. And the vessel region, you can simply say it play act, it act as a filtration unit, okay? It play as a filtration, okay? Now, that means there's also this middle portion right here. This middle portion is called, they said the middle, middle respiratory reasons or middle, middle reasons, okay? And this is one of the very important reasons. The reason why is because this middle region has some very, very clinical important importance into that because this middle region is one of the components of the middle region, highly vascular, okay, highly vascular. What does that mean? Meaning that they have the highest vascular because they have a blood supplies from the five different sources, okay? Uh, that's why, like, you know, nose bleedings are very, very common or because of the, this middle area is highly vascular because it has anastomosis from uh, uh, the five different blood circulations. Like, one of them is actually the different, like, they, they say this a Kisselback area. The reason why is because their anastomosis, the blood vessels that are coming there are from, like, you have a anterior, uh, let me just write it down this anterior ethmoidal artery, okay? And there's also called posterior ethmoidal artery, okay? And then other one is called, you have a, a sphenal uh, palatine artery, all right? Uh, there's also another one is called the septal branch of your labial artery, all right? Now, so, if you look at this, the anterior ethmoidal artery, posterior ethmoidal artery, septopalatine artery, right? These guys are the branches of your internal, oft, uh, sorry, it's the uh, ophthalmic artery. That, that's what it gives, gives rise to. Uh, ophthalmic artery that supplies your eye, right? And this is, comes from your internal artery, and you have this posterior, both anterior ethmoidal, and then you have sifnopalatine artery that comes from your maxillary artery, and the maxillary artery is the branch of your external carotid artery, right? And also, you have the separate branch of labial artery that is a branch of your facial artery, and the facial artery also comes from your external carotid artery. So these are the four branches. One more branch is also, uh, uh, which I don't remember right now off of my head, uh, but that also comes from like a maxillary artery that gives a rise to uh, 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 give a branches and make those Kisselbeck area. So those five branches actually anastomosis with one another, right? Because that what happens is that uh, it makes it very very vascular. Actually, that's called uh, the other branch is actually it's called greater uh, greater palatine artery. That's what it's called. All right, and it is comes from also the maxillary artery, and maxillary artery comes from your your external carotid artery. All right. So this fiber, that's because because of the, it it makes it like uh, like highly vascular, okay? Highly vascular. That's why the epistaxis is very very common in the uh, uh, on the your on your middle middle regions. And because of the highly vascular, what happens? One of the functions of what it does is that it it uh, when, whenever you take the air in, what happens is that it the, the air it's kind of like it warms that warms that air, okay? It warms the air. So because remember, and it brings that air into the your your body temperature because you it have the it should be in your body temperature to have a proper good uh, proper gas exchange. And one more thing that I do have to mention, one thing is that these vascular regions have epithelium. What kind of epithelium? They have this uh, keratinized, okay? Your keratinized stratified, okay? Uh, uh, stratified squamous epithelium, okay? It's a keratinized stra stratified squamous epithelium aligned by these vestibular regions, okay? And then, now, and then, I, as I said, that's a filtration unit. And there's an upper zone right here. Let's just make this upper zone here. And this upper zone is called, we call it olfactory regions, okay? The upper zone is called your olfactory region. Let me just write down. Oh, this is first base, this is second, and this is the, the base zone right here. Let's just write down here. 
And this base is for what? It's uh, it's for the olfactory regions, okay? And those olfactory regions are uh, have the membrane. They're called olfactory membrane, okay? Olfactory, olfactory membrane. Okay, also there's another name is given for that, which is called, you, they say, skinnydarian, skinnydarian membrane, all right? Membrane. So, basically, this is called skinnydarian membrane. All they're also called that. And then, these guys are very, very important because what happens is that, uh, this is for the sense of smell, right? So, whatever smell that comes, and they, these guys have a, um, the, the respiratory epithelium lined by that and what happens is like these guys have some of the cells like you have a Bowman Bowman glands okay but guys don't get confused with Bowman glands or the Bowman capsules Bowman capsules are present in kidney okay so Bowman glands are here and then uh, one of the other important cells that they have a, these cells are called basal cells and basal cells play a, uh, is act as like stem cells okay and what happens is that uh, they act as stem cells and they can actually make more sort of like this olfactory olfactory cells and olfactory cells as you know it acts as a what it acts as a what it acts as a you know, like uh, uh, it's, it's for the sense of smell, right? And then basically, this guy, these cells are sort of modified in such a way they're called the bipolar, bipolar neurons. All right. Now, these are some of the general features that I wanted to, to tell you guys. But one of the things also I have to mention of olfactory membranes that they're the, the cells that are lined. They're more like ciliated, right? Because of, they do have like some cilia uh, that pre present, present. Okay. So because of what happens, that these guys also like play a role of like removing or like doesn't allow any sort of like a uh, sort of like pathogens or any big molecules uh, can actually get in through this all right now these are the these are just uh, some of the functions that i wanted to mention about the what is the role your nose play play a role into and they're, they're very important functions that it, that that you yeah, the, their nose provides for the respiratory systems okay now then after that what happens is like this nose have this posterior their communications okay to the point uh communications posteriorly it communicates it communicates uh through this isthmus okay uh uh and this there's and there's and it opens up this area called like a uh, cone they call this a uh, uh cho and a cone, right? And then this opening of this, because this is called your your nasopharynx, right? This nasopharynx gets open. The posterior opens at this this area uh, area, and that opens at the at the at pharynx actually. And then what happens? Is this opening is called cone, and you, from there, what happens? Is there is what you get to see pharynx. All right. So, and remember, the pharynx is one of the functions. One one most important thing is that the common pathway or common passes for you both food and air is your pharynx and pharynx are divided into what pharynx are divided into nasopharynx oropharynx down here right all right and then obviously that after that what's going to happen is that you're going to have a oropharynx and then you have the larynx right laryngopharynx so so that's what's going to happen then after that you're going to have larynx and then you're going to have trachea and all that kind of stuff right now one of the things that I do have to mention is that now let's go back and then we'll talk about because remember our thing is that you have a again conducting joints you have to have a nose we talk about then we'll talk about this now we we'll just talked about pharynx there right and then we have to go to back to your larynx okay and what is the important features of larynx we have to also talk about this now now let me erase this part and we'll talk about the larynx okay yeah with the larynx okay so quickly i'm gonna draw this larynx portions right here all right okay let's just make it okay so here okay let's just make this like larynx here so like here what happens is that there's a bone okay this is this is oropharynx and then i'll just make it lar larynx here what happens is down here there's a bone right here okay let's just make hold on Let's just make this up. Okay, there's a bone here, right here, like this. Okay, this is called hyoid bone, all right? Now, what is this called? This is called hyoid bone, right here. All right, now, this hyoid bone, right? And this this is a hyoid bone, right here, okay? And then, what is with the, well, underneath the hyoid bone is a ligament, right here. Okay, this ligament is very important ligament. 
because this is actually connecting something here, and that is connecting what? Your important structure there, right? This important structure that's covering here is going to be your What does this look like to you? Your larynx, right? Or your thyroid cartilage, actually. This is called your thyroid cartilage, right? And then the larynx that is actually connecting your hyoid bone with your thyroid cartilage is called your thyrohyoid ligament, okay? Thyrohyoid ligament, it's a very important ligament, right? And then you also have down here is, what is this called? This is a vocal folds, right? Let's make this a vocal folds. And the space between these two vocal folds is what is called Rima glottis, rima glottis, right? That's what it's called. Now, now, we've talked about this. Then after that, and this is thyroid cartilage, right? They also call it the anthem thyroid cartilage. They call it Adam's apple, right? Then down below, right here, there's another ligaments here connecting this. And this usually, like you know, this this thyroid cartilage. This is this is at the level of like C3 to like C6. Okay, like the larynx is like about three to uh, three C3 to like three uh, C6 level. You get to see. Now, there is a, this ligament down here, another ligament, and then that is connecting with this guy right here. There's another ligament right here. What is this ligament is called? This ligament, uh, sorry, this ligament we're talking about, this is going to be, this is going to be my cricoid cartilage, okay? This is going to be my cricoid cartilage. All right. Now, just a little bit of anatomy I'm doing right here, okay? But, and then, below that is also another ligament right here, see? What is this ligament right here? We'll talk about that. But this ligament right here that is connecting from your thyroid to your cricoid is called, what is it? Cricothyroid ligaments. Okay? That's a cricothyroid ligament. This is very important points. I think this is how, and remember, like if the, uh, these cricothyroid ligaments are a very important place for like, you know, if you want to ever like, uh, uh, if there's a person's unconscious or so, and if you want to like um, go through and uh, put the air in, inside, you have to go through from this, right? And then after that, there's a ligament right here that's bounding with your your trachea right here. Let's just make this as a let's a, let's just make this as a trachea, okay? Let's make this as a trachea right here, and the trachea is. Here, this is my trachea, okay? And the trachea, of course, have those C set of like those cartilage, hidden cartilage too. And from the level of C6, okay, this trachea accents, okay? This accent from the level of like C6, and, and it's about like 10 to like uh, 15 centimeter in diameters, uh, okay? And then about like maybe 2.5 in the wide of your trachea, all right? And then this ligament that is actually bound to your cricoid cartilage with the, uh, with the trachea, we can simply, there's a, you can say that a trachea, uh, a craw, it's a tra it's a, because it's a trachea, uh, it's a cricotrachea ligament, it's a trachea, uh, it's a cricotrachea ligament, that's what they call, right? And then these are 16 to 20 healing cartilage you get to see. Now, the most important thing is here is that the this guys any above this like see this above this your vocal folds they have this specific type of like cells and these type of cells are going to be non keratinized okay so non keratinized keratinized stratified squamous squay squamous Epithelium. That's what you get to see about this, the superior portions of your vocal folds. But the inferior from the vocal folds, you're going to see different types of cells that are lining by this. And that is very, very important cells because this is, you have to remember that. What is that is that that's going to have a, you're going to see the pseudo, pseudo stratified, okay? Pseudo stratified is going to be simple columnar epithelium. You get to see. And then these guys, obviously those from down here, they do have, uh, obviously they have cilia, right? Right, cilia. Uh, and the cilia play as a role of like, a, you know, they call it the mucociliary uh, transport or escalator, okay? Because what it does is that any sort of like, that you just mucus that gets builds up, it, it transports or throws throws out uh, from your systems and maybe puts it in your intestines too, right? And they do also have like a gobbler cells present there, okay? And then they also have those uh, basal cells and basal cells. I told you as a it it actually acts as a uh, 
your stem cells. Uh, they do have like some of the cells there, brass cells also there, but usually brass cells are present in like in your on your nasal area, uh, and those brass cells act as like more like sensory, uh, more for like sensations, right? And then, uh, uh, so these are the these are the lining you get to see, especially in trachea. Uh, you have this sort of stratified, uh, simple columnar epithelial uh, epithelial epithelial tissues, right? And then they also have this cartilage. These cartilage are this cartilage you get to see in trachea. These are uh, these are C-shaped cartilage. They're they're, they're hyaline cartilage. Okay, so these are important reason that they are called hyaline cartilage. Okay, but the C-shaped cartilage. And then the reason why they're C-shaped is because they're not completely like. Uh, well, uh, because there are C-shaped, because in the postures of your, your, if you look at the trachea, you, you get to see they are not, like, they're not, they don't have those, this cartilage, okay? They're like more of, they're more horizontal, if you, if you see it, uh, looks. And then, the, what is the functions of this hidden cartilage is that it prevents trachea, uh, from collapsing, okay? So, prevents trachea from collapsing the reason why is because remember whenever you take whenever you take air in or air out what's going to happen is that you know this this changes okay this structure can begin smaller and get bigger so in order for like to the trachea to not to collapse this hidden hidden cartilage prevents it right and you know that 16 or 20 as i said uh are present there also one more thing you have to know is like remember what is posterior to this trachea is that your esophagus right so whenever you take the air in what happens esophagus sort of like tend to like get expand right whenever you esophagus get expand what happens the trachea becomes a little narrow right so it, so because in order so that way in order for the in order for the trachea not to collapse this healing cartilage also provides it and also it provides like you know esophagus to get a little bigger too because it's hidden cartilage so it's really important the functions of this c cartilage okay